As part of Lycaf Live, this is Infinity and Beyond, in association with Southern Graphics, who is me, a special section of the comic festival devoted to how technology is pushing the boundaries of comics. This video is all about Andre Berg, and Andre is a, a 3D animator who's come through the industry and ended up making his own 3D comic called RRR with his company Plastiek. So we'll interview Andre and look at how he's developed his career from the early days of reading comics right the way up to directing Lego shows in Bangkok. So let's, yeah. let's just talk a little bit. So we know it's Andre Berg. Um, let's talk a little bit about career history and, and where you came from and then a bit about your career highlights, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah no, sure. It's um, like I, I, uh, I, once in a very distant, distant past, I, I thought I wanted to make computer games. So I started studying um, programming, which yeah. turns out is pretty complicated. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I failed very hard. Um, but I did came into contact with 3D animation at, at the, while I was studying. So then I started making animations and I, uh, I realized that I really wanted to do animations. Yeah. And so I went to the Art Academy in the, ne ne in the Netherlands and I, um, I spent like four years there uh, learning how to make you know, animations. Um, and after that I made like like a short which did good with the festivals yeah. and I, um, I enjoyed uh, traveling around, going to festivals, being the Mr. Director, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was great. And I, I think for seven years after that, I um, was making shorts and commercials, um, but wanting to, you know, I really like storytelling and, and yeah. you know, the narrative uh, part, which is difficult in animation because everything is so, um, yeah. so big. Um, but then I heard that they were looking for a director in uh, Bangkok uh, on some Lego show. I said, yeah. Great, let's go. Uh, so I applied for the job, I got it, and I spent um, the next five years working for Lego shows uh, in Bangkok. It's a great team over there. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. But after five years, I was also tired, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just, T TV um, or film? Was it TV. TV, yeah. yeah, so even harder then for so, so constant, yeah, yeah, yeah. constant churn, yeah. yeah. Exactly, which I like. I like the, the pressure, but there's not a lot of room for experimentation. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's no time. Yeah. So um, after five years, I, uh, I really felt the need to just, you know, do something myself again and experiment. And I picked up that old programming uh, stuff uh, again a little bit. And I was experimenting in Unity and you know, playing with the, the iPad, because also as soon as I got like an iPad, I was like, this, this yeah. is fantastic. I can read it's like all the old comics, I can read them again. Yeah. And um, it really felt like a really good match. Like uh, not, not every comic, but some comics, they just, they worked even better on, on, yeah. on the tablet. Um, so I, I, I was really into exploring that uh, further. Um, so then I quit my job and I just, I started making this animated comic using the gyroscope of the iPad yeah. um, to control the camera. And uh, I made a bunch of experiments with it and some failed and some were nice, uh, which was really nice as well, just to, okay, let's, it's a whole new medium. Yeah. The rules aren't really there yet. So um, you should take the opportunity to play around and experiment. Yeah, just dive in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I did it, and then I, I finished like this um, the short comic uh, Protonopia, yep. uh, and it uh, it did really well online. Like uh, uh, <laughs> I still, but like I, I I put it on online for free, and I'm sure it wasn't it wouldn't have been such a big success if I would have asked money for it. Yeah. But still, I remember seeing like oh, 140 thousand downloads. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're regretting. Yeah. Then you're regretting not putting ten dollars on it. Yeah. So. yeah, even though you know, like then it would have been like I don't know, like fifty downloads or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you but, just don't uh, know, do you? If it, if the zeitgeist is there, if, it, if the timing yeah. is right, it's you know people have yeah, people yeah, have yeah. said the same and then made millions. I, I'm sure. So it's so That's so true. going going back from what you've just said there, the. Um, so prior to, to, to college then, have you been influenced by comics from an early age? Do you have 
earliest memories yeah. of comics? Is, it, is that your thing? Is that what drives... Because you, you said the word story a lot there. And, and yeah. I know you're all about the character, you know, from knowing you from a, a distance, I know you're about the character and you're about the story arc. And so, you know, that, that shines across in your work. Um, I just wonder about you. your memory of, of comics and coming through. What's, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like growing up in the Netherlands, there, there were very, very much like um, being influenced by the Belgian uh, yeah. comics, uh, right? Belgian and, and, and French comics. So um, you probably don't know this comic, I think, but uh, Suske and Wiske is, um, is very big in the Netherlands and uh, uh, Flanders, the, the Dutch speaking part of uh, Belgium. Uh, I think it's Bob et Bobette in French and Wally and Wanda or something in English. And I know um, that name, but what, I'll, what I will do is I'm going to put links on, on the video. So we'll, we'll, we'll look that up and we'll share oh, that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like from an artist's perspective, now looking bad at, back at it, like, Okay, it's not it's not the best comic yeah. yeah but as a kid i loved it and there's like 200 of them and basically the writer would just take like okay let's take this old legend and change the characters and hey there's a new issue yeah so it actually gave you a lot of the the classics like um yeah. uh, storytelling as well and i just yeah i would eat them up like my family were a lot of uh, like horse riding people yeah and every sunday we would have to go to um a horse riding show and I don't like I mean like sure horses are nice but they, they slime yeah, it and it hurts to ride <laughs> I don't like it so I would always like bring the comments yeah, the comment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that, I I know that, that guy yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but for sure and then we had like um, a lot of blueberry uh, uh, comics as well yeah. and um, like and in Ten Ten of course like like yeah. all the, the, the French Belgian stuff um, we had and then later when I became a teenager, I, I, I got into the, the Japanese stuff and the American yeah. stuff. Yeah, so for sure, like, um, like Akira, um, yeah. uh, big, big thing, of course. So, so you, I mean, you've, you've gone through quite a few years there. So you, so you are obviously influenced, right? Yeah, like a lot of us, with the, the, the influence is deep and it, it, it obviously drives, yeah, yeah what, what probably drove... I assume it drove what you you chose to do in college, and then you know, the, and that brought you to where you are now. I guess. Yes, um, I think so. Yeah. I mean, it's always difficult to um, to put it in a concrete point, right? Yeah, but yeah. So it's, it's all a, to... a collection of chances and and and, and different yeah. choices. And is the is the one storyline there that you or one theme that really stands out above them all? I mean, you mentioned about ten things there. Is the one that really is like close to your heart that yeah, yeah. Some um, people just, you know, they they have one that even if it is a, you know, not the best, it's just one that did something like, you know, a, a few people have said to me, Tintin, um, is is really hit home early on, and I know a lot of a lot of the French people that I've chatted to about, you know, if you look at Asterix the Gaul and how important Asterix and Obelix yeah. are, and this, you know, yeah. even in England, it's you know that, that that's a huge uh, intellectual yeah, property. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's so influential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I mean, it's kind of boring, but I, I, I would have to go back to the Suska and Riska. No, that's good. That's, yeah, yeah I thought, <laughs> do you know what? I did think you would say that is because it's the first one you said. It's, I, I went also, talking, so I think like later I found like, yeah, better stories, art wise, story wise, yeah. on all fronts. But it, when you read a comic on a young age, it yeah. just, you know, it takes you to this dream fantasy world and with all the possibilities and it like, yeah. It, it fires up the, the brain and it yeah. marks that that will clearly, never be erased. <laughs> clearly stuck with you, yeah. With, with the um, so with with the advent of of the, the newer, you know, what we would now be calling XR technologies, you know, with with augmented reality, virtual reality, and then what we you know what you're doing with the iPad, um, it, you know, what would you say have been the big like doink moment what are the big moments when you go oh my god i can i can see now that the comic's going to pop off the screen now what in that technology which is the one that's doing it for you the most what's what's really ringing your bell i mean at the moment it's um like just spatial computing yeah. and 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 like you know like quill like just painting in space yeah. like okay that changes everything like yeah absolutely yeah um and as soon as i saw that also like okay i that's I have to move into I have to move <laughs> move yeah. there like this. Do you do out. any? If, if, 
do you do any VR? Have you tried any? Have you, have you, have you worked with Quill? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. And, um, and I love it. And I do, I do see the, the future there. But I wanted to make it like, okay, so you take that and you put it straight into a phone. And that's just technically not possible yet. Yeah, yeah. And also working in VR for a long period, I get like really dry eyes and it just becomes yeah. a very painful situation. So, um, and for me, like, yeah, working on a comic and only being able to work on it for a half an hour, that doesn't work. Not good enough, is it? No, no, I got yeah. that. Yeah. So um, I believe in it. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's definitely in the future. There is so many possibilities there. And especially when you think of also like as a comic, as a story organized in space, you know, yeah. like, okay, that's, that's what a comic page is. But then, yeah. yeah, if you have like infinite space, that opens up so many new possibilities. Uh, yeah. And that I'm sure are not even being like like no we, we don't even know now. we don't even know where it's going to so so yeah. with the iPad and with, and with and with what you've been doing then that so the, the you know the, to some degree the illusion of depth but there is 3D depth in there I know you know with some of the planes yeah. and you, your product yeah, yeah. are you are you at your I guess that's your you were telling me you're going on to a new project and I don't know whether you can share that or not but I guess that's along the same lines is it it's storytelling with, with within yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I can I can share a little bit about it. Like, oh, go on then. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's um, I, what, what I, I I love the comics that we made, of course, um, but it was still it's still like a comic page. Yeah, right? like it's it's um, and I when I look at the vertical scrolling format, um, that's just so much better suited for phones and uh, for any digital medium, right? Like just okay, yeah. you have this uh, scroll. And if you have a 3D scene in there, you automatically have a perspective change. So yeah. you can play with it much more with hide and reveal. Um, so we're making like, like for some IP, we're making um, like comics with a vertical scroll in it also. Fantastic. It's, it's turning out pretty, pretty nice actually. And um, I like that it's more, uh, it's really something that you couldn't do on paper. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. the whole scroll. I mean, like, Yes, in theory, you could have like an actual scroll. <laughs> scroll it down, yeah. Yeah, but you probably wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> oh, but then you can have like, how do you say, like with the, the pages that you have the fold out things. Oh, like but a pop have it on a scroll to have a pop-up yeah. scroll. <laughs> now, now you are getting out there. That's, that's what we like to hear. That's, yeah. No, it's, so, 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 I mean, it, everyone I talk to, I mean, everybody has a an idea of where they think it might go, but obviously we, we just don't have a clue. This, this last, I think the last five years has really kind of, it's been another, I, I saw a, like a big explosion at the end of the nineties into digital sculpting and how yeah. the stuff that Bay was doing on Lord of the Rings and how that all changed. And that's where my career went. But now I feel that, that, you know, we, we, we used to hear the word media and mixed media. Well, it truly is now. I mean, you don't actually know what you're looking at sometimes now. It, you look at Goro Fujita and Quill. I, I, I've been making CG since it was invented and I, you know, I've been making models since it was invented. I don't even know how he does what he does with Quill. I don't actually know the technology. You know, I know Quill, I can use Quill. But, you yeah. know, and, and, and I see that coming um, at me all the time and, and, and I'm in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think about the next 10 years for comics then? Where do you feel, what would be some yeah. of your guesses? I think, I mean, um, I, honestly, I don't know, of course. Yeah, that's, that's um, a lot of people I think, say that. <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like maybe like the word comic is, is, is maybe also like, maybe there should be a new term or like that it's, a comic seems to be more and more about a, a pop culture, um, yeah. uh, thing. Yeah. And, um, like non-linear storytelling or non yeah. like time-based storytelling or however you want to call it. It's not, not very sexy names. Comic is much easier. Um, or however, you know, if you have some sort of spatial scene that tells a story like i guess you, you can call it the diorama but it's yeah. it's closer to a comic reading experience probably than yeah um, watching a movie um so I, I i kind of hope that there will be a cool new name um 
but it's but hard. They, but it's hard. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, I think I think with with that question always seems to get people because if I said where do you think movies will be, most people have an answer. If I say where do you think games will be, a lot of people have an answer. But the more people I talk to about comics, the, there's the traditionalists that say it'll you know we want it just to stay on paper. But that you know that that will always be there, but it will become more yeah. and more niche, won't it? But where the journey goes, I think you've just, you know, you know, is it interactive storytelling? Is it spatial? Is it, does it go down one of the XR routes? You know, is it augmented? Yeah. It, nobody has really said to me that they... You can argue they, also, like, none of the, of the new versions of comics have been successful, right? Yeah. Definitely not in the way that paper comics have been successful. Absolutely, yeah. Like yeah. The way that they exploded when they became uh, popular, there's nothing like it with any of the other versions. Um, maybe, like when I see like the, the vertical scrolling stuff, the, the webtoon stuff, like at least they have a very low threshold for making yeah. it. So a lot of, you know, you will get interesting stuff automatically because so many young yeah. people can just experiment with it. And I think that's kind of essential also that you need you need many people to be able to to make to make it like yeah. whatever version it is and like all of the interactive stuff have had you know you need like either expensive equipment or a lot of training to to make them yeah which automatically makes it like a very niche uh, thing so i would say that that is kind of key like um also for the the xr virtual uh, yeah. spatial computing stuff yeah like right now, it's just a couple of people doing it. But like, if everybody has a thing like that, like, okay, that's, that's yeah, it's a it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny when you when you look at the the stats and and, and obviously doing these interviews, I've, I've I've looked at a lot of the stats of what comic shops are doing, and it's quite scary, really. That you know that you know yeah. sing, single issue comics, you know the, the you know the sales of them have changed dramatically in the in the last few years because one who goes to a comic store and and, and two single issues you have you know people are now used to getting their stuff given in blocks you know like with the netflix you know here's a box set kind of yeah. thing so i think i think our world has changed you know and, and, and i wouldn't think that comics would be the, the demographic of youngsters reading a comic now is probably skewed i don't know that number but i would imagine that's skewed quite a lot yeah. do you see your audience for you know for the stuff that you know i'm, I'm a 50 year old man and it, you know i i love what you've done on the ipad do you feel that it's aimed at a specific age of audience are you are you trying to you... grab an audience or... <laughs> yeah we try <laughs> well when, when i made protonopia i was like sure like okay this is basically for people like me um and uh, and that turned out to be true and then yeah. like when making rrr we wanted to like okay you know let's make this the thing that we would love when if we were 11 right yeah uh, so we really you know went for that and through they uh, they really liked they really liked it but not yeah. as much as um, you know 30 plus uh, dudes yeah because i think there's something with uh, kids that they can accept new situations just much easier like oh i guess this is possible great whatever yeah. blah 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 and for 30 plus people, it's like, whoa, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, which, which sucked for us to see that just, just see a kid like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I've, I've done exactly that with seven year olds. I've introduced them, I've given them a piece of kit that people would die for, at, you know, any, anyone 25 plus. And I've given it to a seven year old and they're drawing, like on a whack on one of the mobile studio pros, <laughs> and they're drawing quite efficiently for a seven-year-old within a minute and you're like yeah and then you give them a something to sculpt on and they're like yeah there's a there's an ear there's a face and they have no barrier to that so the ipad generation is definitely that that's one of the things about comics that i, I, I don't know where it's going to go because the audience that's coming through uh, you know they, they want the story and the character i know that because it's still the most pertinent thing in game and film yeah. But, but how are they going to be buying a comic and what? how are we yeah. going to be making comics for that generation? Well, that's generation? the thing now anyways, right? Like nobody buys anything anymore online, right? We oh. created like basically an internet that's 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 free. Yeah. Um, so for kids especially, they don't have any money and you used to have like, oh, this is my money for the week. I can buy yeah. one comic for it. 
um, because you didn't have any other options. But if you're a kid now, you're not going to spend the money on a comic because you can steal everything online. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I would and do I... the same if I was a kid, by the way. So like selling stuff online, that's a, it's a problem anyways. Yeah. Like you need to basically just gain a following by giving it away for free yeah. and then get big enough so that you can start to make money. And then continue it and find a model that's easier than stealing. Yeah. yeah which is the trick that they're struggling yeah, exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. That'd, that'd be nice. I think, um, I think some of them are, you know, some companies are getting there, but it's, it's, it's always going to be a battle now. I think once, once, once we were out of the box with the internet, I think that, that we saw that coming. Um, do you think of, can you think of any, along the lines of what you did with RRR and that kind of, you know, third dimension in a comic format, can you think of any other technologies that have really sort of like sparked your interest? Is there anything that you can think of, um, like what Bay's doing really, which is he's kept it very much as a comic, yeah, yeah. but he's given that third dimension way. If you want to stick your head in the page, you can. I thought that was really quite yeah. interesting. Is there anything yeah, like that yeah, you've yeah. seen recently that, that, that has sparked your imagination? I think, um, not really. No? No, and honestly, sometimes it can bum me out also if I see somebody do something that I didn't think of. Oh, yeah, so that, yeah. that, that green-eyed monster comes <laughs> out. Yeah. I get that every day. <laughs> I love it as well, right? That you're yeah. like, oh, fuck, that's cool. But if you feel like, oh, that's, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've just described my working week. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i do every day yeah no. that's art station for you <laughs> oh yeah i can't like no it's good uh, it's... The, the um that it, it, it's really interesting for me to be talking to people about about um their experiences with comics but I, everyone seems to be the same which is you know we, we we're at we're at, we're at a point now where it can go any one of a million ways and you know i definitely think and i'm going to ask you a question about characters in a moment um you, I definitely think the character and the story in whatever medium we are has got to be, you know, the story has got to be the paramount thing. And I think that's where we're getting it right with some of these TV shows, you know, it's, it's really about where does that character go? But with comics is that what, what would you say, you know, for, forget what you were influenced by as a kid, just think about your last 10 years. What would you say is the most influential character that, that you admire, you know, is the way, even if you stretch out of comic into sort of like, you know, the Marvel universe or into any of those sure. comic, you know, is there anything yeah, yeah, there yeah. that, that has really made you go, wow, that's a storyline. That's a, actually, um, yeah, I, uh, I was thinking of other examples, but now suddenly it hit me. Like I read Nausicaa like last year, yeah. the, the yeah. comic. And, uh, I mean, I, I love it anyways. But she as a main character is is fantastic also. Yeah, yeah. Like she's uh, very layered and she combines so many elements in a very elegant um, yeah. uh, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that and also the That'll whole story is one, just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a strong, bad strong just female. Last year. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's um, uh, you know, Nausicaa is one of them that is, is, it comes up again and again when I'm talking to people about the, the strength of the character. And, and I think it's a good one to talk about really because it's one that could, you know, it, it looks like a comic all the time to me. And it, you know, wh whatever medium that would go into, wherever that would go, it would feel like it's a, it's got that illustration based background. Yeah. And I think that's good to stay true to that. I think if you were to look at RRR and your characters, if yeah. you were to go, I know they are 3d to some degree, but if you were to strip that out and make a 3d show out of it, I think that might go a completely yeah. different way. I, I, you know, I think that the, the power of what you've done there is it, it looks like it's jumped off the page. Yeah. You know, I, I think I, actually like, I mean, you can make a 3d with a 2d look of course. Yeah. But then the, um, there is like something in like the roughness of the outlines and all that is like clearly not 3d, yeah. which is a very pleasant combination with the 3d. -ness. Definitely. Yeah. Um, that I like, and also like we made a version in VR, and then that was an even nicer combination. That is like, oh yeah, it's like it has an analog feel. I mean, we you know we painted it uh, with yeah. Wacom, <laughs> but yeah. it has like an analog quality uh, yeah. to it, and and that like where where they two the two meet the the analog and the digital. Yeah. I think that's always like a nice uh, 
a happy no, it's fantastic to hear that. That that's I mean that that answers the, one of the previous questions about where stuff is going and and taking an evolution of your kind of IP and what what you've done with RRR and you know I think that you know other people might decide where that goes later. You know, like, you know, obviously you you know with your IP I don't I don't know, but that that someone will be inspired by what you've done and the, you know. Yeah, I must say also that for me that's. I mean, like, I'm just, you know, a dude making stuff. But then, like, sometimes I got, like, some messages of some student that are writing some thesis on comics and that they just, like, you know, let me know that they saw my work and that it was, like, like an inspiration for them. That's, uh, that's kind of amazing to, to oh, that's hear. brilliant, that. isn't it? That's, 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 brilliant. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's your legacy, isn't it? That's, you know, with what you move on to and move on to, it'd be nice for people to come back to you in five years and go, look, I, I, you know, I looked at RRR and look at what I've done. And that will happen because it's, you know, it's an influential piece of tech and character that you've developed there. I think it is, I know a lot of people that, you know, quote it as an example all the time. So it's, you've made something special. Right. There, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm happy with that. Do you, do you think with, with your career then, do you think you'll move more into TV and film and, 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 and go back to what you used to do? Or do you think you'll try and do more of your own IP and try, try and develop more things like you did with RRR? Do you feel like, you know, what, yeah. which path are you feeling like at the moment? Well, like uh, right now, I'm, I'm, uh, like I'm directing a TV show uh, yeah. again. Uh, yeah. Because uh, well, honestly, like it's really nice to make your own comic, but you also get too much in your in your own head. Like yeah. after, I think it was three years that me and both were working, yeah. and it's, it's just okay. Like it's really nice to work with the team again, um, and we're combining it now with like developing our IP further, um, like an animated series and also yeah. some more comics and a game also for something else. Wow! So we. Uh, <laughs> So you're all over the place with it, so it, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. When I say it like that, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, we uh, we try everything. Um, no, but I mean, yeah, well, you know how it is. Like, if you develop a TV show, like, okay, yeah, it may be the best idea ever, but it's yeah. difficult to get an actual show uh, off the ground. So um, yeah, uh, we we hope uh, we we know it will be a fantastic show, of course. Oh, that's but, good. Um, yeah, that's good. Having confidence in it, that would be. Are, are you? Um, we're approaching the half hour, so I'm going to ask you one or two more key ones, and some of them are a bit more personal sure. to me, really. In terms of software, I obviously watched what you built, and you know, in the software, you you're always talking about Maya and then Blender, and you know, mixing it all. Is there something that are you very loyal to any software, or are you quite agnostic and you're quite happy to use whatever tool? I mean, it's just a tool, right? Yeah, a tool is important, of course, but it's not the most important thing. Yeah. Um, Although I must say, like I've been very impressed with Blender lately, and, yeah. and it's just it does a very interesting combination of things, yeah. and I mean they have the moral high ground over uh, Maya for sure. <laughs> yeah, eighteen hundred quid a year as a, as opposed to free. Yeah, there's there's a lot of argument. You know, there's you you can see them a lot online about those arguments, but it's hard to sure. turn away from Blender after two point eight, isn't it? To, you know, look at yeah. the tools like Grease Pencil is just mind blowing. Fantastic. Yeah. We've been doing like like all of our 2D animation now in Blender also, because it's yeah. just it's also better than the 2D animation software that you can get for free at yeah. least. So it's, it's crazy. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I see yeah. I, I see traditional comic artists that, you know, they are they're, they're very the ones that I know anyway that work for like, you know, the work on two thousand AD and you know that the, those kind of properties, they're very they've done it their way for quite a while and then suddenly they'll jump on a, you know, a 32 inch Wacom and suddenly it'll be, Oh my God, it's like the, why have I not done this five, <laughs> six years ago? You know, and why am I not inking like this? And so it's, it, you know, I, I do, I do agree exactly with what you just said. I, I, I don't think any one particular tool is, is what you should stick with it. Uh, we, we've done a lot of sculpting in Blender just to prove that we can, and it's great. You know, I've, I've used ZBrush for 20 years, but it's cool to see uh, people like yourself, you know, going into production and saying the word Blender. And, you know, because the, the one big argument that the Blender, well, not argument, but you hear a lot of people saying, you know, where is it in production? Where do we see Blender in, yeah. in, in the studio? I mean, that's it's, also like the big issue for as far as I can see it also is, is mostly just uh, trained people with the software, right? Like all the animators know how to use Maya. 
Yeah. And so it's easy to get animators for Maya also. But yeah, if you want to do a production in Blender, you're going to have to have a big, yeah. big enough pool of people that are, I mean, of course they can learn Blender and I, I feel like it's changing slowly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, either way, it's just, it's just a piece of software. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm totally convinced that you can do basically the same thing in Blender, 3D Studio, Max, Maya, Lightwave. Yeah. Is that still a thing? Yeah, still there. Still, it absolutely <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone yeah, that Cinema uses 4D. It. And... Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, still yeah. use Cinema 4D every day for because we do a lot of TV, you know, broadcast TV that, yeah, that the client that. always wants it in cinema. So rather than paying a license for Maya and then moving it to cinema, just do it all in cinema. It's, we, you know, I, I, we don't have a loyalty to... I have a loyalty to ZBrush, I have to be honest, because I've yeah. used it, yeah, since, since the 90s. So, you know, I... I think sometimes wow. a program has been around for so long that it, it becomes special. Um, you yeah. know, uh, I don't have that with Maya. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but and, and Blender, I think he's Blender is one of those that you have to have a conversation every month about because as, as Bay would say, there's an army of monkeys making it and, and, and it's changing on the fly, isn't it? It's, you know, your next mm -hmm. comic will come out of Blender. I imagine, or the, you know, the next big IP could be of sculpted in Blender and, sketched in blender it's it, it's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely I think crazy it's uh, whatever pipeline you have also like I, I think it's good to start playing with different software in general of course yeah but especially blender is one of the more interesting things to just um to see what's happening in the community also and like yeah because for me at least the big problem with maya i love maya i love it enough to hate it um but they just they're not moving anywhere. No. It's the same program. They just add more bugs to it with every version. Yeah. But it's, it's it, there's no movement. And Blender, maybe there's too much movement, but you know, there is like lots of stuff happening. And I no, think it's, it's, um, it's a good way to say it. Did you ever use uh, programs like, um, do you use Toon Boom and for your animation? Do, 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 do... I have to get into it uh, again. Like, I, I'm, I think I only use Toon Boom storyboards to write way too many notes on storyboards. Yeah. Um, so I, I haven't animated uh, with it. I, I didn't do a, a lot of 2D animation in general. So uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the new production that I'm doing, we're gonna be using the storyboard version of it again. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna to have to get into it. Yeah. Um, but I, I hear a lot of people use it. Yeah, I see, I, hear, I see it in a lot of shows. You know, you've got like the new Rick and Morty's all done in it. And, you know, it, oh, yeah. it just, you know it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of people talking about it. Um, and and a lot, obviously you've got Clip Studio for, you know, the comic artists are always going on about the hatred yeah. for, 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 for Photoshop against Clip <laughs> Studio. So I hear that, you know, every, every time I try and show somebody something, like, have, you, have you got Clip yeah. Studio on here? Yes, put Clip Studio on. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. <laughs> I, I really like a don't similar, it yeah. feels a little bit like a similar to Maya and Blender that is like uh, I, I yeah I, I always feel like it's like Maya and and Max you know where it does oh, exactly yeah. the same thing but it's just there's just little things that where you you know learn learn the modifier stack instead of an outliner and let you just you know it's the same output it's the same you know you you actually yeah. get there the same way and and in some to some degree the the shortcuts are the bloody same so um, and you've got Critter, which is your blender for, for 2D. You know, yeah. Critter's just Photoshop for free, isn't it? So I love disruptive yeah, yeah. software like that. So do you do any um, traditional? I'll ask you two more questions. I'll treat myself to two more and then you can, I'll, I'll let you get on with your day. Uh, do you do any traditional drawing? Are you, are you a, do, you, do you carry a sketch pad? Um, yeah, 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 I do. Or do you do I it on your iPad now? That's not, yeah. I try, but it's, uh, it's, it's not the same. <laughs> not the same, yeah. It doesn't have that feel. Yeah. No, actually, like when I, um, like when I quit uh, the directing job, I, I've been basically just speaking about people having to change stuff for five years. And so I felt like I, I cannot, I mean, I cannot, I, I was never a good artist, um, but I'm good with edit and, and story. So uh, I really want to improve that. Yeah. So I just, I, I went to drawing school, like uh, basics, like, okay. And, and struggle for uh, months and, and make, you know, uh, drawings and go to live drawing classes. Uh, and really, I mean, it, it really helped. And so I try to keep it up, like carry a yeah. sketchbook, you know, wherever you go, don't go to Facebook on your phone, but just, you know, make a drawing. Yeah. Um, and it's tough, but I, yeah. I still try to, to do it as much as possible. 
yeah and yeah. also i really like uh watercolor yeah oh um, wow yeah because yeah. there's like uh there's it's like an exercise and acceptance <laughs> like you I, I gave watercolor up because i'm just not that good i, I paint every day and uh, I, I switched to gouache because i'm just oh, yeah I'm just so i'm just so crap with watercolors it's, it's a skill isn't it P painting the light ignoring the light first yeah is it's a like a mental it, process whoa it's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's take me down a dark road it's very very I love yeah. it. I love seeing a good water. You know, someone who can see the light first impresses me so much. Yeah. So, and don't get me wrong. I'm not good at it, um, <laughs> but I like it as an exercise and a mental process. Yeah. I'm right? sure you like, are. Yeah. I'm sure you're absolutely stunning. I'll have to get, I'll have to get a look at your paintings one day. So that's fantastic. So I'm going to, that, that'll be the end of the, the, the question line. So first of all, thank you so much for talking about that.